everybody. Welcome to the morning show. We're coming to you today on WJOPLP New Report at FM 96.3 on Channel 9 and on New Report Community Media's YouTube channel at ncmhub.org. I'm your host, Mary Jacobson, and I'm just delighted this morning to welcome Knock Middle School English and Language Arts teachers Eric Shilge and Jen Groskin. And they're here to talk about the StoryCorps Community Interviewing Project they've just completed, and they brought along three eighth graders whose brief card podcast won awards from among 160 students who completed the project. So first of all, Eric and Jen, welcome. Thank you very much for taking time to visit the show and talk about this really wonderful sounding project. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And the students are Lucas Atrado is here. Lucas, thanks very Hi. much and congratulations. Thanks for me. Gabby Smith is here. Gabby, also congratulations and thanks for coming. Thank you. And Nate Brown is also here. Nate, congratulations to you as well. And Thank thanks you so much. much to all three of you for coming. I appreciate it. I thought we'd start with Eric and Jen. If you could just tell us about StoryCorps. What is it and what led you to decide you wanted to assign this project and what impact did you hope it would have on the students completing the interviews? Sure, so we actually are the advisory team and we develop the advisory programs for the eighth grade. And one of the goals of the advisory program is to get students to be able to speak and talk about their learning and their understanding and we, through the summer, were discussing some of our goals and how we would achieve these goals. And one of the things that seemed like a natural fit was the idea of having students do podcasts. Oh, yes. The prior year in seventh grade, their teacher, Mr. Tim Mahan, had all the students in the seventh grade learning how to make podcasts. We had a generous gift from the NEF and they um, purchased a podcasting booth, actually. Oh, how so exciting. We thought it would be great to utilize that skill with our students. The other layer is that all of the students in eighth grade uh, partook in a speaker series. So we had career speakers come in. I think we had over 50 different career speakers wow. coming in to speak with students about their choices in the future. And so all of the students had been exposed to all these different career pathways and we thought it would be a neat way for them to close and start to reflect on it by selecting an adult that they could talk to about their future and their career yeah. as a way to connect with someone they know and also to just complete the story piece of how you do this. This works out great because our English teacher, Rico Antos, um, and Eric Shilga often have our students listen to StoryCorps um, episodes. So the students were really aware of these short format conversations. So I felt like we had all the pieces in place, yeah. and then we wanted to kick it out to our students to complete these projects. And, and could you say a little bit about what StoryCorps is? Because I think a lot of people, I had never heard of it, mm -hmm. but I looked it up, I found the website. So could you just say a little bit about yeah. the larger context of what StoryCorps is? Yeah, so StoryCorps is a uh, NPR program. It airs on Friday mornings, and uh, it's the uh, invention of uh, someone named Dave Isay, who thought that what we really want to do is capture and archive the stories of every everyday ordinary Americans mm -hmm. uh, so they can live on in the National Archives along with the um, you know recordings of and texts left behind by our most famous citizens right. and people who have come through the United States. Right. Uh, so uh, every week they play a new interview but they're um, at various times driving little recordings, mobile recording studios around the country, inviting people to come and talk on particular themes and capturing those sort of intimate moments that exist between people who know each other really well and want to share a little piece of their story with the world. Uh, so we wanted to bring a little bit of that sort of intimate, uh, meaningful connection that exists between our students and their community, whether that be family or teachers or neighbors, and bring that into our school so our school could be connected in the way that StoryCorps seeks to connect, you know, the wider American community. It's such a great idea, both in the larger context of NPR, but also in the context of new reporters creating history yes. <laughs> and contributing to the history of all Americans. And the history of America is all Americans, isn't it? So I just love the idea. And I was delighted that you all were willing to come on and share some of your um, interview subjects with us. I have to ask before we um, talk to the three of you about your podcast, so how on earth did you figure out which three to choose? Because you had 160. <laughs> so right. what were the, and, and, and the three of you clearly won. <laughs> so you must have satisfied the criteria 
and then some, but what were the criteria? What were you looking for? That's a great question. The first thing I wanted to mention is that Jen is like the mad scientist inventor <laughs> of the advisory program. I don't know if the students realize this, but Ms. Groskin is constantly inventing these amazing new experiences from the speaker series to the podcast project to a whole range of opportunities that connect our students both to the community <laughs> and to the future. So the way our collaboration works is I'm like her lab assistant, right? So she brings a great idea and I, I help her bring that idea into yep. the reality. And then the students are both our test subjects and also yep. the most incredible creations of yep. this entire uh, sort of endeavor of our education. But Jen really is the creative mastermind and engine behind so much of what we do in the advisory program. Uh, so what we did initially is we had a lot of students who created something very special, but were a little bit reticent to share that with the community. Uh -huh. So we've seen that a lot amongst our students. They really want to have these meaningful conversations, but a lot of them are not very interested in sharing it with the broader okay. sort of world. I understand. Um, so what we did first is we paired students up with each other and in small groups in their homerooms and advisories, they listened to each other's podcasts and chose one either that they thought oh. was the best or who was willing to be tribute to the rest of the group and then pass it on to the next level. And we slowly built it out. So from sharing with a partner to sharing with a group of four to sharing oh. with your advisory to sharing with your homeroom. And then the homerooms each selected two students podcast interviews to put forward to the entire grade to represent okay. the grade. And to that, we sent those to an interview panel that included um, the people in our school community who have demonstrated that they care deeply okay. about elevating student voice and sharing it with the community. So that's uh, Dr. Abrams, our literacy coordinator, Lisa Furlong, who's the director of communications for the district, okay. um, uh, Mr. Mahan and Ms. Rousseau, who do technology integration, like the podcast booth, Ms. Hellman, our school librarian, uh, and Mr. Marcos and Ms. Parsons, our principal and assistant principal. Um, and so together, that group uh, decided on who, out of those uh, 16 top nominated podcasts would be sitting here today and here you have them and here you are well that's a very democratic process and it strikes me as a very affirming process then because you had to go through a lot of different levels to to, to get to the point of being top three so good for you <laughs> and it sounds like a wonderful process as well well I think it's time to talk to the podcasters then um, I have questions for each of you is would somebody like to go first um, I don't know. Lucas, you want sure. to go first? <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, okay, Lucas, so first of all, I'm curious to find out how did you decide who you wanted to interview and, you know, what were the criteria you used, who did you interview, and how did you prepare? Well, I interviewed um, the tech ed teacher, Mr. Balkis, uh, from the school, and uh, I had, like, all kinds of different choices, but I really, like, enjoy robotics and doing it in my own time. Mr. Balkis teaches tech ed. And I feel like if I chose him, I get to like learn all about how he like came up with this job at the middle school as a tech ed teacher. And I figured he must have also like liked robotics as a kid as well. And I was just interested in like what he would do as a kid. Like I wonder if he is similar to me, mm. like doing all kinds of tinkering in his basement and garage. So <laughs> I was just wondering. Well, those sound like perfect reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, why don't we listen to a little bit of your podcast? Mm -hmm. It's just about a minute of it. Let me get it on here. And we're going to be showing a picture of you and your teacher mm -hmm. while this plays. All right, so this is the super awesome Lucas and Mr. Balkus podcast. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome. And we're going to be asking Mr. Balkus about his awesome job at the middle school. And let's jump into it. All right, Mr. Balkus, um, can you tell me about a typical day is like at the middle school as a tech ed teacher? A typical day is uh, pretty fun, actually. Kids come down, we uh, work on projects, we do some designing, we're on the shop, we're in the computer lab, uh, we're building robots. Uh, this year we got farm bots going, so it's um, it's it's busy and active for sure. And that's that's yeah. usually my typical day. Yeah. What what do you think you're most excited to to look? What do you look forward to every day when you come in? 
Um, I, for me personally, it's just seeing kids fired up about things. Yeah. That's what I like the most. Like to see um, kids excited about making projects. Kids, you know, being out in the shop working on their um, their designs and using the machines and, and just generally, you know, finding joy in doing that. For me, that's what I 100% look forward to. Is yeah. just seeing them enjoying it. All right. The joy. <laughs> Mr. Balkus is actually here in the control room watching Lucas. It's a great example of a teacher who's just like so passionate about the community and his students. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Well, well Lucas, um, what inspired uh, you about doing the interview with Mr. Balkus, or, or what did you learn from what him learned, through the result? Well, Mr. Balkus was like super full of surprises. I had no idea what to say afterwards. Apparently, I thought he was just like a regular tech ed teacher, like at the school, but apparently he was like a commercial pilot and oh. led into science and then he eventually decided to go to tech ed, so I learned all kinds of things I would have never guessed about him. Even if I could try, I could never guess that he was like doing commercial pilots. He fixed up like a moped when he was a kid too and used to drive that to a gas station to ask about like advice for repairing cars, so I so, thought that was kind of crazy. So he did tinker. Yeah, he did lots of <laughs> you tinkering. You are absolutely so. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sounds like, for that reason, it sounds like he's a great role model. <laughs> yeah, he was. He is. And those were things that you probably would never have found out about him. No, were if I had not never asked. For StoryCorps. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great testament um, to the power of StoryCorps and the mm -hmm. benefits of doing it. Would you agree, Lucas? Yeah, I would definitely agree. Well, I, that's wonderful. I would have never worked up like the courage to ask and even interview him on my own time and I guess since we're doing the StoryCorps pro project it, well I wouldn't have fallen into realizing all that stuff about him on my own time. Well that's wonderful. Well thank you so much. I really <laughs> appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well um, who would like to go next? Gabby or Nate? Nate? I'll go, yeah. You ready to go? Yep. Well, Nate, could you then share with us, um, you know, how did you decide who you wanted to interview um, and, and what did you do to prepare? Well, obviously, I chose my mom, right? And um, I've always been into sort of that science, and she is a scientist. Huh. Uh, my dad is also a lawyer, so I also um, kind of got in the mindset of interviewing him instead, but. Um, just my mom kind of gave into my mind, and I just really wanted to do her. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I just really was excited for it. Um, I kind of wanted to make um, a longer podcast, in a sense, just to show more of what more of what she does in work and how she led up to what her career is now. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, those sound like great reasons. I'm curious, though, also, Nate, because interviewing somebody who's a teacher um, is a little bit different as a challenge, it but is, your mom, yeah. you know. I do, yes. <laughs> yes. And so was there an extra kind of challenge or extra prep you did saying, well, it's mom? <laughs> so. Um, I definitely think there was an extra challenge. I mean, he did a teacher, and I definitely yeah. think I already knew my mom, obviously, because, yeah. you know, I'm with her always. And, um, but I definitely learned a lot from her and how she went through college and um, how she chose the career path she did. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think it was just a great experience overall. Wonderful. Well, let's listen to a minute or so of okay. your podcast then. Take the mass of these peptides. There's a lot of powerful machines that we use. Uh, so uh, I work with two other colleagues in my in my lab and uh, work to get the work done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And um, obviously, see, you went to college for biology. Mm -hmm. uh, and what really led you to go to college for more of a science background? And what led you after college to? find the career of going into the lab and working with peptides? Yep, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I had always had a fascination with the natural world around me. Uh, I grew up uh, in a small coastal town in Maine and uh, had free will of running through the woods in, in a very <laughs> rural area, yep. you know. Um, catching uh, tadpoles in the spring and um, watching them turn into frogs and um, things like that. Uh, 
birds and animals. Well, how nice to have your mother say, what a great question. Yes. <laughs> and here, I mean, I wish we could listen to more <laughs> because I love the picture uh, that comes across of her kind of um, free ranging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the little Rachel Carson exploring yeah, yeah, the time. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> Were these things that you'd known before, um, Nate? Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So obviously okay. she is from Maine and uh, yeah. I definitely knew she, she was kind of part of that woodsy area. Yeah. And um, she always had talked about in her years in my house, basically, about just how she kind of went around. She went to nearby ponds and just kind of searched the area and kind of kind of had a huge fascination with just nature and all that places yeah. around her. So, Well, I always find it inspiring to find the places where people's childhood experiences and adventures wind up being really formative influences on the careers, on the lives yes, they yes. wind up leading. Um, there's a writer who calls it the acorn self mm -hmm. that yeah. goes into the oak tree. Um, so what did you find most inspiring or what did you most learn from having the opportunity to sit down and interview your mom? Um, I So obviously it was, again, a great experience. I learned so much from her. even. Even after living, you know, 14 years with her, I definitely, um, definitely learned a lot about how she kind of grew up in a sense that kind of um, like influenced her to become a scientist and really go into that background. Um, so I definitely think I learned pretty much mostly that I did learn, and it was all new uh, to me myself. And um, I definitely think again, it was pretty much all a new thing to me. I didn't yeah. know she really kind of ran around everywhere. She kind of was influenced by her surroundings yes, rather than but, her, yeah. what she learned from adults around here. Mm -hmm. her. So um, yeah, so definitely that. That sounds like a great experience for for, for both of you, it really. It was, yes, yeah. it definitely was. It's, well, not, well, it's not always yeah. easy to picture our parents as children, right? Yes, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But also, I mean, she just, when she talks about her childhood, it sounds like it was really happy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which is a great thing <laughs> to know about a parent. Um, so anyway, thank you for that. Well, that brings us to you, Gabby. <laughs> so tell us who you chose and what led you to choose um, the person that you interviewed. So I chose my dad. Um, it wasn't, so my mom and my dad are both in the same field. My dad's a lawyer. My mom's a court reporter. Okay. So... Um, I've always, me and my dad always every night when we drive to practice, we always, it's like a 30 minute car ride. So we always do this thing where we talk about our day. And so I've like, through that, it's kind of just a time for us to connect and talk about his work and my school and stuff. So I had kind of already had an understanding about his work and what he does and all that stuff. But I kind of wanted to know, <clears throat> sorry, it's okay. more on like the work aspect of it. I, he had always, I would always find out the most interesting cases and all this yeah. stuff, but I wanted to see like, hey, what does he do in a day? What is, yeah. how does this, how did he come to become a lawyer? And so I think that's what really influenced me to choose him. Okay. Um, well, let's listen to some of your podcasts then. Let me just get it up here. There. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Oftentimes people find themselves in, into legal situations where they didn't do anything wrong or that, you know, somebody's making, you know, they're suing them for something they didn't do or something like that. And it's frightening for a lot of people. And I get to help them in those situations. So I think that's probably what I value the most out of it. He's a lawyer, if anybody was wondering. So how has your career shaped into the person you are today? Um, I, you know, I would say my career is just one aspect of who I am today. I think be, becoming the person that you are takes a lot of different factors, mm -hmm. um, in particular where you grow up, your, your religious and other beliefs. Um, so I think my career has helped me um, maintain the type of person I, I like to be, which is somebody who, you know, is trying to be kind to everybody and, and live that way. So I think my career has helped me um, as a, just one aspect of my other sets of beliefs. Can you well, that was really interesting. Yeah. 
because um, it sounds as though you got to um, know, well, let, let me let you say, you know, what did you find inspiring? And then I'll yeah. tell you what I found inspiring. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really inspiring because I had always thought, like, you have work or you have school and then you have everything else in your life. Mm -hmm. Or, But I, what I found most inspiring about um, my dad in this interview was that he really integrated his, like you said in that, he integrated his... Um, uh, pre-existing beliefs and everything he lives by like his morals and his mottos into his job and I think yeah. that um, choosing a job where you can express that and where you can um, live by that is really important and I think that like I never really I was like oh a lawyer that's cool like you get to try cases and stuff but I never really thought of it in the aspect of you're helping people who yes. are in need yeah. and I think that's what was found, found most inspiring about this yeah that's what I found inspiring, too. I think we all have a lot of stereotypes about lawyers. <laughs> sometimes they, when they're helping us, they have a good rep, but sometimes when they're, you know, sometimes they get a bad rep. And your dad talked about it in terms of people get into situations they might be frightened or confused. And then clearly what is part of what drew him to this profession was the opportunity to help people in those situations. Yeah. And I think it's always useful to think about somebody's profession from the inside and mm -hmm. what it means to them. And then he went on to talk about all the different aspects of being a human being mm -hmm. that yeah. clearly went into the, his values, in other words, mm -hmm. that clearly went into his becoming a lawyer and the way he practices law. Yeah. So that's what I found that's about. Mm -hmm. so, um, Anyway, um, so I'm curious to find out from each of the three of you, what did the person you interviewed tell you about what the experience was like for them? Because this was a two-part. <laughs> and that podcast booth is really small. So it's got enough room for two people and nothing else. <laughs> so whichever one of you would like to talk about, what did your interviewee um, say to you about um, what it was like for them to have you interview them? Well, so. You can ask Mr. Balkins too. Oh yeah, Mr. Yeah. Balkins is in the control room. I'm thinking about it right now. Yeah. Well, I think he had a um, pretty fun time. At least what I was trying to read from him. Um, I know it was kind of awkward because two people computer record. Yeah. Is sort of crowded. So I don't know. I never really asked them how it, um, how what he really thought about that. So I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him this afternoon. We can ask him when we finish. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Nate? Did your mom say anything after uh, the interview? My mom said it was it was a great experience. She did yeah. say in the beginning it was a little claustrophobic <laughs> um, in, in the room, but she over she said overall that it was just a great thing to have the school just have this assignment make it so fun in that sense. Oh, so, yeah. wonderful. Gabby, how about your dad? Yeah, I think my dad had a second name. My dad's also very claustrophobic. Oh, dear. So um, I was like, okay, it's getting a little hot in here. But it was, um, no, it was, a, he thought it was amazing. Because um, just the way that the, not only the, this podcasting assignment, but the school in general, how they um, bring together both the parents and the students, I think it um, really builds our community. Mm -hmm. And I think that this podcasting project in particular um, was really helpful even listening to my like even from my experience listening to my classmates I learned about more of their parents and I think um, what he said was just learning from my perspective how yeah. I view his and then he thought it was really special that he got to share that how he felt with me so. oh that's uh, I mean that's great I mean I, I, what stands out to me from just hearing little snippets of what you did is how it's an opportunity to get to know more aspects of who a person is to go you know if you think of a person as like an onion mostly we're at the top two or three layers and but the opportunity to do story core takes you to further further in to their life story and how they what made them make the choices that show up now in the outer layers yeah. but they were formed by the inner layers um, growing up or taking your moped in, <laughs> tinkering Lucas, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, I'm curious, Jen and Eric, did any of the other people who the students interviewed, on, we've, unif we've established that it's a claustrophobic space. <laughs> yeah, sure. <Yeah. laughs> it makes me think of the isolation booth. <laughs> right. Um, but, um, but the isolation booth and the claustrophobia aside, did any of the... Um, other people interviewed uh, talk about what it was like for them or what it meant to them to have their story, to have somebody be interested enough in them to say, I'd like to interview for my school project. When you listen to the podcast, you hear it in the conversation yeah. with the student and the parent a lot, the idea that the parent is 
being asked questions that they haven't ever been asked before. Yeah. yeah. And it's this wonderful connected piece and they go, wow, you've never asked that before. This is a really, I got to think about that for a second and think about, you know, what you're asking, what this means to you. So it's been yeah. a really neat um, way, I think, for students to, as Gabby said, connect with their parents. And it, it's a time really where a lot of students are seeking independence um, mm -hmm, from right. their yeah. adult partners yeah. and trying to become more independent. So we wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for a meaningful connection as you're yeah. moving on to this next point in yeah. your life as a high schooler, yeah. where you may find yourself talking to them, but talking to them, not talking with them. So we right. really wanted an opportunity for them to share. Yeah. So throughout the podcast, there's sort of this wonderful theme of, thank you for asking me these questions. Oh. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Um, and that value, you can hear that in the conversations with the adults. And I think that uh, the, the size of the podcast booth is a good metaphor for how sometimes intimacy can be uncomfortable, right? When yes. we get close and we ask each other questions we haven't asked each other before and we have a chance with the people we love to have a different kind of conversation yeah. or the people we care about and who care about us, I think that you know sometimes that closeness, you know, it doesn't always feel comfortable at first, but then it really brings about a special sort of transformative yeah. change. Uh, and I remember there was one interview from another student who asked his mom about when what she remembered about being really sad as a kid. You know, oh, like, what, what, interesting what was, question. Yeah, some ways. That, and I think yeah. that in, in a way it was helpful for that student who was also feeling sadness to yeah. uh, sort of relate to and connect to experiences their parent had had that were similar yeah. when they were their age. And at first, you could hear in the interview that the parent was taken aback. Yeah, they didn't expect to be asked that question. Yeah. And that was a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But the conversation that ensued from that was really mm -hmm. important and powerful and meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, a way to connect around. I mean, being sad is a fundamental life experience. We've all been there. And yet, it's often something we don't feel comfortable or, or free talking about. So it sounds as though it was a real, provided some connected tissue between yes. the generations. So. And the students are expert. Um, can I say dialogic leaders now? Yeah. They're like they've practiced so much. Um, Eric and the language arts teachers have really worked with the students to practice having conversations with each other around fiction, around what they read, and about what they think. Yeah. And so they have this practice, and so yeah. they're they're quite adept at this. Yeah. Um, and they want to know. They're not asking just because it's the task of asking. They're asking to find the answer yeah. and to listen to it. hear the answer. And they're listening too. And I remember Eric when you were on the show in the past. It was because of a listening curriculum. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, that you you and the students loved it. <laughs> I remember because um, listening is key to um, to learning, really. Um, well, it sounds like it's just been a wonderful experience for everybody. So I think I know what your my last question. I think I know what you're going to say is, would you do StoryCorps again? <laughs> Who wants to go first? Okay, you know, um, I yes, I probably definitely would because uh, well, I still have interest in all kinds of other people who I really won't know anything about it if I asked them on my own time and I feel like if I can record it it really is more meaningful yeah and well if I had if I have the option to do it again um I probably would let me think about this for a moment fair enough <laughs> well the funny thing is the day I did the podcast I was sick as a dog oh, so no. um I probably would have fixed that. Yeah, sure. Going on. And, uh, we can all but identify. Actually, the funny thing is, uh, I was given the option to skip school that day, but if I had skipped school, none of this would have happened. Yeah. So you I know feel your like teachers are right behind you. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, what we're here. If uh, I guess most yeah. most of life is just showing up and just acting upon the opportunities that are always there. Right? That's right. Well put, Lucas. Yeah, most of life is just showing up. People say it's how you show your love. <laughs> you just show up. So well put. Um, and Nate or Gabby, would you do it again? Uh, yes, I think as my parents said, it, my mom said it was a great experience. I thought it was a great experience. And I just think, just like uh, Mr. Shilga said, just how just connecting and asking these questions that you're not really getting asked um, is a great way to connect with other people. And I yeah. definitely think... Um, that would be a huge aspect to doing it again. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. yeah. 
How about you, Gabby? I would definitely do it again. I think it was a um, really eye-opening experience and something I will definitely remember um, in the future when choosing my career path. And even if we did it on other things, not re like not regarding or not regarding career or anything, but just yeah. life yeah. in general. Yeah. I think um, it's such like a, like Mr. Uh, like Mr. Shilga said, it was such like a close, connected, intimate um, experience yeah. that I think it's something that I would remember for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I think that that's what StoryCorps does, and I think that's why it's so important, and I would definitely do it again. And that's what education is supposed to be, too, isn't it? Something that you remember for the rest of your life yes. that has an impact on you. So well done all around. Thank you all so much. I've mm -hmm. really enjoyed listening to you and learning from you, and it sounds like such a wonderful pro project for everybody. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for StoryCorps. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Back to the laboratory, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to come back. <laughs> That's right. We'll have more. <laughs> Please join us again next Thursday at 9 for the morning show. Till then, be well. Interview somebody. <laughs>